So the mesotrap study is looking at a particular aspect of patients with mesothelioma. Often when patients first present, they have large pleural effusions and they may have quite extensive tumour growing over the surface, surface of their lung. So sometimes when we drain out that fluid, we then find that the lung can't re-expand properly and in fact is trapped. And what often happens is that having had the fluid drained out, the lung can't re-expand and the fluid then re-accumulates. And then they have, the person has to have a further drainage procedure and they just go round and round in sort of cycles of having drainage, getting more breathless again, more drainage, etc, etc. So over um, the years, people have looked at different ways of tackling this. Uh, if you go to a surgeon, they may do a keyhole operation and go in and try and remove as much of the tumour as they can over the sur surface of the lung to let it re-expand. Uh, physicians quite often put a small indwelling pleural catheter in between the ribs into the pleural space and drain out the fluid. Um, and that catheter can stay in uh, situ for a prolonged period of time and you can drain the fluid out a couple of times a week uh, repetitively at home, which is more convenient for the patient than coming backwards and forwards to the hospital. But we don't really know which is the best approach. So what we thought we'd do with the MESO-TRAP study, which is funded by the Research for Patient Benefit um, funding stream of the NIHR, is to first of all undertake a feasibility study to see if we could recruit 36 patients into the study and randomise them either to having the surgical procedure or having the uh, catheter drain inserted. And then actually measure quality of life following each of those procedures. Um, because we recognise that people in this phase of their life are coming towards the end of their life. Uh, we're not going to prolong their survival, but if we can improve their quality of life during this period of time, that would be very important. Uh, it is a feasibility study because what we'd like to do is go on and um, do a full randomised controlled trial between the two modalities, uh, but that would probably require um, a couple of hundred patients, maybe more. Uh, before we make that jump, we need to find out, first of all, simple things such as, you know, how common is trapped lung and mesothelioma? Because we know when we surveyed the community, we got wide variation in the number of trapped lungs they see each year. Um, so we don't, well, we're now getting an idea what the prevalence of trapped lung is, but before then, we didn't know. So we're trying to find out, you know, what's the prevalence of trapped lung? Um, how are these patients? Are they amenable to being randomised to one procedure or the other? Will they be, can they be recruited into the study? And then um, assessing these quality of life measures. Um, we're also doing a couple of other things. We've, we've um, added on recently a... a an observational sub-study because what we're finding is that actually a lot of these patients who are potentially eligible for the study um, are actually very frail and either they don't feel they can participate or the surgeons don't feel they're fit enough for the surgery uh, and they are excluded for one reason or another. So we want to capture these people and even if they don't go into the uh, randomised study, even if they have a, a catheter put in for instance because that's the easiest thing to do for them we still like to understand how they are with that. So by running this observational sub-study, um, even if the main randomised study doesn't fully recruit, we will still capture a lot of information. And I think that will be very important for actually trying to answer, begin to answer this question, because actually in the literature, there is very little information about trapped lung out there in this cohort of people. And if from this study, one way or another, we can get enough information to begin to inform the community and guidelines in the future, how, it is, how the best way to manage these patients is, that, that will be very valuable. In order to get this work, piece of work done and try and answer these questions, we are very, very keen to promote this study as widely as we can. We've got it open at um, quite a lot number of centres across uh, the UK and they are looking for cases and then approaching patients. Um, but in order, as I say, to get the information um, and so we can try and up, begin to answer these questions, we're, we're reaching out to all these centres um, and saying to uh, uh, physicians and nurses, if you have a patient with mesothelioma who's got a trapped lung, uh, contact us. We can put you in touch with a centre close to you uh, who you may be able to refer the patient to. Um, so I think that's one of the, the messages I'll let it get across. We're, we're very keen to recruit to this study. And if you have patients with trapped lung, please contact us. 
um, at either a Papworth Hospital um, or a, one of the, your local mesothelioma um, regional centre will know about the study and be able to help you.